So let's discuss the next story. We're going to be talking and breaking down an article from the Washington Post called Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Campaign Drips with Intrigue as it Dances Around a Political Hornet's Nest. So we're going to read some highlights and respond to each highlight point by point. Quote, but with its historical inspirations and the game's utilization of President Reagan, the story featured in Cold War feels primed to stir up political controversy, and although the Call of Duty series has always dabbled in conspiracies, it's a core theme for the 2020 update at a time when conspiracy talk has dotted discussion around the upcoming U.S. presidential election. So just because the game has Ronald Reagan in it means it might be politically controversial. And they say conspiracy, but we're talking about conspiracies in the 80s and not today. Anyways, the article goes on to discuss a private digital press event that Treyarch held, basically revealing gameplay missions or campaign missions to these journalists. And the writer who wrote this article was in the room, or meeting, I should say. He goes on to say, quote, It's completely unknown outside the development of Treyarch and Raven's software where Cold War stands on Reagan or anything political. In a question and answer session with journalists, the Post asked them, given the real world political climate, and prominently featuring Reagan, what considerations did you have in portraying the longtime GOP standard bearer? The question was submitted via an Activision moderated chat, and, re and when relayed to the developers, it was paraphrased by a spokesman into what considerations did you have in portraying not only Reagan, but other real world people that you engaged in? The developers gave a general answer about watching tons of Reagan speeches and talking to people who were close to him, including former cabinet members, to get his character right. So why do we think Activision tried to paraphrase that question in that manner? My guess is because they don't want people to try to link this game with current politics in terms of the characters in their story or just the campaign in general. Because after all, the game takes place in the 80s. I think it's going to be political in the past and not current uh, political commentary. That would be my guess. And because Reagan is brought up today in political debates and commentary, I think there are journalists out there like this one who are trying to use that point to try to argue that maybe this game should have a certain portrayal of Reagan based off of public perception of the past. However, I think it might be smarter for Treyarch to just portray him just as accurate as they could in terms of what he did, what his demeanor was like. That way, there's no underlying political commentary that tries to link to the present, because I'm not sure if people enjoy that very much. And I also think that they just don't want their developers to try to tiptoe in the minefield uh, with video game journalists about discussing Reagan, because again, they try to link it to the modern political atmosphere. Quote, Players can pick between three genders, male, female, or classified. The classified clar classification is meant for anyone who might be non-binary or doesn't want to identify a gender. The classified designation is also applicable to other fields in the bioform as well. The thinking from the developers is that rather than forcing players into a decision they don't want to make, 
People will appreciate the feeling of being shrouded in mystery and letting their imagination define their character. The developers also re-recorded dialogue to use them, they pronouns for the classified gender. Other character options include incidental background details that don't affect gameplay, like place of birth and your military background. Quote, and this is the game developer speaking, If we don't find something that somebody wants, let's let them leave it classified to make the mysterious, shadowy, special operative Black Ops character they want to be. So when it came to gender, that same thing was thrown out. Why can't we leave that classified? There's no reason we can't do that. We're already going to change the he and she, so it was easy enough to use those different pronouns as well. I think this is actually a good option to include a character, uh, just a non-binary character. Now, the reason why I say this is because it fits with the game's theme. To have this option of being unknown as a black ops special operative for the u.s military i think that makes sense and i think this so far is a great example of how to be inclusive in video games without pushing some sort of social or political commentary down someone's throat because it fits with the game's theme so far from what we know at least quote it's unclear how much politics will actually play in the story, but the early reveal and marketing campaign indicates such discussion may swirl around the game regardless of the developer's wishes. Reagan seems to be a prominent factor, and it's hard to ignore the fact his policies are still hotly debated, particularly by those on the left and used to score political points today. Just look at conservative PAC, the Lincoln Project, which formed last year as an anti-Trump segment of the Republican Party, and how it continues to weave in Reagan's words with the current climate and upcoming election. Given how the series has treated historical figures, Reagan's role in the story will likely be benign. Way, 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 way. Hold up. Didn't you just say earlier in the article that Reagan seems to be a prominent factor? And then a paragraph later, you just said Reagan's role in the story will likely be benign? So which is it, dude? Make up your mind. Is Reagan going to be a big factor in this Call of Duty story or campaign or not? Seems like a bit of a contradiction right there, buddy. The Black Ops series caused some controversy for the first game's portrayal of Fidel Castro, and Cuban state media called the game American Propaganda. Now, I briefly remember that controversy. It was very short-lived, and I don't think any of the Americans really bought into it. Uh, of it being propaganda, because after all, you are killing a body double, like a doppelganger ganger for Castro instead of Castro himself. Uh, I still remember playing that in a campaign roughly 10 years ago. And yeah, that was a short-lived controversy, to be honest. And I don't think anybody in the States really took it seriously. Definitely not as serious as the fucking no Russian controversy from Modern Warfare 2, which released the year before Black Ops. And it just seems to me this article, it's like these game journalists want this game to be political. It wants to uh, make political commentary on today's pop, uh political climate and political atmosphere because that way they can criticize the game for that especially if it disagrees with their own political views benign or not reagan's inclusion in the game 
as well as 1980s conspiracies about American-Soviet relations are sure to generate commentary. YouTube personalities and essayists took a shine to last week's teaser trailer, which centered on Yuri Bezmenov, a Soviet defector who fled to the West and became a prominent lecturer against Soviet communism and KGB tactics. These essays seem to overreach in tying the current political climate and the anti-police protests to Bezmenov's warning about allowing all the schmucks to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., who still promises loads of things, never mind if the promises are fulfilled or not. So this article states that YouTube personalities were talking about Bezmanov's claims. Who? Which ones? You just said YouTube personalities and essayists were talking about, so surely you have some examples, right? Why would you not list them in the article? Is it perhaps because you may have actually just been referring to the comments section? Because look, you know how it is on YouTube, or maybe you don't. Every time there's a COD teaser, there's always going to be those COD YouTubers who will make 20-minute speculation videos over a one-minute teaser trailer every year. That's just how it works, regardless if there's suggestive political commentary or not. And regarding his statement in this article saying these essays seem to overreach in tying the current political climate and the anti-police protest to Bezmenov's warning. Well, how is that an overreach? Why did you not uh, further explain your reasoning for stating that these are overreaches in terms of comparisons? There was lots of violence from protests and riots shown in the teaser trailer, is that not what's happening today? Or I guess you might be one of those people who believes that there isn't much rioting going on in our major cities right now. And the quote you provided of DC promising loads of things and possibly not fulfilling them, is that not true today? Didn't Congress in the summer tell people we're going to have a plan and then took a vacation? And before they took the vacation or recess, they were just like, yeah, we're going to have a plan to help out the American people and the unemployed particularly. And then they came back from their recess and still nothing got resolved. And both sides were blaming each other. No, it's Trump. He doesn't want to negotiate with us. No, it's the Democrats. They're just refusing to hear us out. So how is this an overreach exactly? I mean, if you're going to say it's an overreach, at least state why you think it's an overreach. But I guess it's easier to make vague statements and just leave it there, right? And would you be saying that this is an overreach if the violence in these cities were centered around a right-leaning issue. Because I'm not sure if I mentioned it on this podcast before, but I genuinely believe that if the rioting and protests that are taking place in the past few months were centered around a right-leaning issue, and by the way, I acknowledge that there's plenty of people who are conservative that agree that there needs to be police reform, However, if the cause was something more catered to the right and there was violence erupting around it, I would bet you money, I'd bet you half of my savings, which is only 200 bucks right now, that the media would report every single violent incident and even welcome a federal response. And I bet you wouldn't have video game journalists calling this teaser trailer an overreach when talking about today's current political climate. Now, I hope they still don't try to offer political commentary on today's current politics within the campaign itself. 
That's what I would hope. But I'm not sure I plan to buy on to buy Black Ops, the new one anyway, even though I absolutely loved the first Black Ops. Activision has already given me and several people a reason not to buy it. They claim, know your history in the teaser trailer, and yet they just removed one second, I believe, one second of Tiananmen Square footage because Activision is sucking China's dick, apparently. So, and not to mention, I've heard they've also done a price hike. I think the game for next-gen consoles will be $70, but, you know, not my problem. I'm on PC, but I still frown upon that practice. <laughs>